You are now listening to the most talked about blog talk radio station in the universe. Walk in his ways, Impact Voice Radio. Be prepared to have your mind stimulated, your spirit elevated in ways you couldn't even imagine. Introducing your host and the mastermind behind this unforgettable experience, Furman Jackson. Junior, you will not be disappointed. Let's go! Today is Tuesday, June 7, 2022. Welcome to another episode of Walking This Way's Impact Wars Podcast. I'm your host, Fermin Jackson Jr., along with Anna C. and her absent, Coach Shea, Kenny Primetime Williams, Today, I guess it's Tanya J. Miller. She's an author, speaker, life coach, strategist. We welcome you to Walking This Way Impact Wars podcast tonight. Well, thank you, sir. I am excited to be on. I'm sure we're going to have a good time and talk about, you know, what it takes to walk this walk. So I'm ready. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And, um, before I came on air tonight, I know we're talking about, you know, you know, you have 18 experience of being a life coach. And we know that we see a lot of life coaches coming up around, mm-hmm. you know, from guess, from this year on on backwards. But seeing more mm-hmm. of that going around um, as of late. And I said get more into that. But before we get off into the interview, I know we've got entertainment news with Coach Shea. So Coach Shea, take over entertainment news. Hey, everybody, I'm back again with the entertainment news. I got to start y'all out with the hottest. The hottest news right now is celebrity Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey. After a year and a half of dating, Michael B. Jordan decided he was going to propose to Lori Harvey. And she declined the proposal. Not only did she decline the proposal, but they have... It's allegedly heard that they might have split. They're no longer in a relationship. A lot of people are saying it's because Lori Harvey is young. Lori Harvey has a, she has a little track record. She has a track record. She don't really um, believe in dating uh, intentionally. I'm going to say that. She don't really believe in dating (laughs) intentionally. And she's dated a few guys. Um, we have Diddy. She's dated Diddy. She's dated P. Diddy and her and P. Diddy's son. She's dated Trey Songs. She's dated Future. Um, that's just the name of few. And Michael B. Jordan was one of the people that was added to the list. She also dated a race car driver and she's dated a soccer player. Uh, the soccer player, one of which did propose to her as well. She also declined that proposal as well. So, Michael, you should have did your research. You shouldn't have thought that you was going to be the the one to change Lori's behavior. So sorry he got washed up in it. And other news, (laughs) Megan um, Megan Good and Devon Franklin are officially over they the 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 marriage is done it's got finalized on june the second and they are really no longer husband and wife and devon is going to appear on married as first sight as an expert y'all mind-blowing i don't know how he feels he's the expert now at the end of the marriage, but I cannot wait to see. Um, that's actually one of my favorite shows. I love watching the Married at First Sights and uh, Why Did I Get Married and stuff like that. So can't wait to see that. Also, um, to follow up on my Johnny Depp and Amber case, Johnny won the case, you guys. Johnny won the case against Amber. Allegedly, remember, he, he was supposed to be beating her. They were suing each other for defamation of character, and Johnny won. Um, And he said he's just ready to get back to his regular life and his career and ready to get back to his regular programming. He wants his $25 million. That's what he was suing her for. So he won in that case. Um, I definitely would like to know you guys, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, definitely want to know you guys' uh, thoughts about 
um, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. Is this a classic case of the young versus the old? Or is this one of those um, uh, manipulative situations? I honestly feel like maybe, I don't know, Michael, he he just feel like he could change Lori and that it, it wasn't happening for him. But that's all I have for you guys today for our entertainment news. And y'all continue to be dynamic. Appreciate you, Coach, with the latest entertainment news and stuff that's going on. Um, on that situation, I know a lot of guys been going in on Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Sellers. <laughs> it's a word that goes around for sellers. Simps, betas. I'm going to say that if you, uh, to the fellas, if, you, if you're about your game, if you're about your business, it you have to be about, I'm just telling to the fellas, be about your business, be about your business. I'm going to say that again. Knowing who you are, being confident in yourself, being a leader. It's not about your prestige. It's not about your money and all that other stuff. Just be a man. Be about your business. Fellas, get on your purpose. Learn who you are. Take care of your body. Start exercising. Start perfecting some things in your life that you know that you're lacking in. And work on your confidence. That's what it's all about. And... The whole thing. Do you think that he he the sexy he that don't mean the sexiest man alive? He was so confidence is not his issue. No, it, you know it's how he handled himself with the whole situation. You look at it. I, and I definitely think he could. He it's like a part of me want to say he knew better, and then a. <laughs> And then a part of me want to be like she real manipulative too at the same time. Like it's her patterns. Like she don't she don't last in a relationship longer than a year and a half. Because the right like, man in the kitchen. And yeah. then the, and then the people that she dated. If I was Michael B. Jordan, <laughs> I wouldn't have dated her based upon the history of people that she even dated. I would be like. You know, this don't go with this, and this I would have just left her alone. If you look on his Instagram page and her Instagram page, she don't have pictures of him at all. Period. He she has pictures of her. <laughs> she has he has pictures like "I love you, baby" and stuff like that. He was putting her up there, and she moved on. Only man she got on her on Instagram page is a guy that she's working with, business with. Other than that, mm -hmm. she's not on this. He's not on Instagram page at all. You can look it up. I looked it up last night. And, and I can believe it. And that's usually how it is, which is sad. That's usually how it is. Like, if a, a woman will find a man that really, really like her, and really, really adore her, and she's she normally gets these type of men. She's normally in these places to attract these type of men. Like, she ain't attracting a low caliber of men. Most of these men are very successful or they in the in the industry, you know, she's specifically targeting these men. So to me, mm -hmm. she is like a mastermind, like gold digger that's kind of like maneuvering through the industry right now. And if she don't, mm -hmm. if she don't mind getting tossed, they not going to mind letting what? her go around the industry. Well, that's if she want to just look like another industry girl. I mean, that's on him. I mean, one is not... I heard some... It's, it's on him at the end of the day. It's all about your, your about being yourself. You don't have to do all this fancy stuff. And he thought that was going to win her over. And at the end of the day, if she really want to be with him, she would have been with him. You can't make nobody be with you that not want to be with you. And some guys fall for that. You can't make a woman be with you. She don't want to be with you. Vice right? versa with ladies. You can't make a man be with you if he don't want to be with you. We got to learn how to let that stuff go. That's why we all be so bitter, blaming everybody else, because we want to hold on to somebody who don't want to be killed. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like he definitely told her in the beginning, like, I want the family, I want the marriage. And he probably was like, she probably was like, no, that's not what I want. And he was probably like, well, if you stick around and, you know, you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll learn to love me like this. And that's not what happened. Like, he thought, I, I really do feel that. Like, I really feel like he thought he could change her or he could um, make her not be, um, he, he thought he wasn't going to be, he was going to be her last relationship. But 
I mean, she's 25. Everybody keep blaming it on age, but I don't think it's an age thing either because a lot of our ancestors and stuff got married way in their teens and 20s, and I don't really think that's a good enough excuse. Well, that's, yeah, because think about it. 25, you just five years from 30. So that's just an excuse. We all yeah, that's excuse. just an excuse. You done almost missed your proposal. Like, you done missed two proposals. You done turned down two of them. People ain't finna keep proposing to you. Get track record, girl. It's I think it just takes the right... I think once she come across that right man that's gonna, you know, be there, be there, I think that's when she changed everything. That's how she I gonna pick it. a She gonna pick a man that's really not even on her level. She gonna pick a man that's not really even none of that. He gonna be just suing her. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the shoe on the other foot. It's gonna be somebody she really likes, somebody she been really into. He gonna knock her up, and she gonna be a classic case again. Well, well see, I remember because I remember um, before we get off into the interview, I remember this this story about this preacher told this story a long time ago, and it rains with men. Okay, before this man got married to this woman, he broke it down to him more logic. It's more logic than emotion. He's saying, okay, before you say I do to this woman, she got all this stuff going in her life. Are you going to deal with that? You know, her response was, you see how fine she is. <laughs> that ain't never enough. And that's how, not, and that's how sellers get called up. We get so caught up in looks. We never get caught up in the character. We never look at the red flags because that is a lifetime commitment. Then we go off into this puppy love like, Oh, she's high, she's this and everything. And then you get off into the situation, you're like, what I sign up for. So there's that maturity level kick in. I guess you know, with character, studying a person's character, getting to know this person, make sure that's who you want to be with. Cause mm -hmm. his whole front was, you see how fine she is. That's all he said. And then end up six months later, file for divorce. Wow. He got so caught up in how she looks, how fine she is. And the, and then the priest was trying to tell him, hey, okay, before you do this, look what's going on. You see how fine she is. So, fella, stop getting so caught up in the looks and just look at the character of the individual before you make that commitment. Because marriage is sacred, marriage is a lifetime commitment. For better or worse, sickness to health, they'll do its part. And that is a stress of that's a bond we made between ourselves and before God. So be mindful and be careful. I'm saying be, say be careful. Yeah, be careful before you make these <laughs> lifetime commitments. Because the divorce rate right now is very high right now. It really is because people go into these marriages, they go into these things with the high expectations. There's nothing wrong with high expectations, but we get so caught up in the engagement, we get so caught up into the ceremony, but we're not being prepared for marriage. We're not being prepared for the trials and tribulations of a marriage. We're not being prepared for the battle test that's going to come. Marriage is marriage can be whatever two people wanted to be. It takes two women to make a marriage work. And we're not being prepared for that. But we so get caught up in, girl, I did this engagement and we going on social media. And then when, when reality set in, oh, I don't want to be here no more. Or I met somebody else. But you weren't saying that when you proposed the old girl. You, you weren't saying that when you accept the uh, engagement for the guy. Now all of a sudden, I don't want to be here no more. What else you going to find? Because mm -hmm. you go out there and get with somebody else, you're going to have the same same issues. Now you're going to mess somebody else up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. It become a vicious cycle. And they really do. So, hey, guys, to the fella, be careful out there to the fellas. Fellas, get on your purpose. Fellas, get yourself together. Learn how to be a leader. Learn how to work on self. Stop focusing on, I got to get somebody. Focus on yourself. Learn how to be comfortable with yourself first. Be comfortable in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Embrace that inner you. That's all I want to say on that. But tonight, we have our special guest. Um, Tanya Miller, she's a life coach. She has over 18 years of experience um, being a life coach. We know that um, Shay as well, she's into that arena of life coaching and development, things of that nature. And before I got on tonight's show, it made me think about Proverbs 11:14, 14, where it says, where no counsel is, the people fall. 
but in a multitude of counseling, there is safety. And that made me think about that uh, with the whole life coaching thing, having wise counsel. We don't really have a very wise counsel like we used to. Um, now it's to the point now we want people to tell them what we want to hear instead of telling us what we need to hear. And I just thank you, uh, Tony, for just taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on tonight's podcast. Introduce yourself to the audience for the very first time here on Walking This Way in Fat Boy. Also, be shout out to those that are doing this Facebook Live. Hey, everybody. Walking This Way family. My name is Tanya, Tanya J. Miller of Hospice Tanya, Tanya J. Miller LLC. I am the author, speaker, coach, strategist. I help people and organizations to figure out how to put all the pieces of life together so you can do life right and you can do good. Because I wholeheartedly believe that we are all able to do, do life and leadership unapologetically on purpose. And a big shout out to my mom and my daddy because they are drafting me back to my doctor appointment in Louisiana. So big shout out to them as they stay awake <laughs> and uh, get us home safely. And yeah, most definitely. And like I said, I thank you for taking time out of your business. I know you have a lot going on. I know you have over 18 years of experience of being a life coach. So explain what a life coach is. I know we have, when we hear the word coach, we think about sports. But now when you hear a life coach, what is a life coach? Do people get life coach and ministry together? How do they go about this? Explain the difference of what a life coach is all about. Well, that's, well, like, well, first, 18 years, it really started in doing ministry first because um, that was where it was. You know, life coaching and that terminology wasn't a thing 20, 30 years ago, but we were always doing ministry. And so I was in ministry working with youth, teens, young adults, and women um, since I was 17 years old. And so one thing I did, and I realized as I was you know, starting my business because um, I was actually just going to publish a book, but then I realized there was more to who I was and that I was able to do. And so I said, what, what, what is it that I do? What, who am I? And so I, I, I went down the path to being a life coach. But when I tell people the difference of a life coach, the difference between what a life coach is and a therapist is, is the therapist is going to help you get through get through the situation, get through your past, get through it, and help you heal from it. Uh, a life coach is going to help you get to. They're going to coach you to your next level. They're going to coach you to the next assignment. They're going to coach you to the purpose that's in you so that you can continue to forge a vision, a path, and a plan towards your destined place and time that God will have for you to be. And so that's how I look at it with you, you ask the difference between the two, the, 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 the counselor, the therapist, the psychologist, whichever one you go to, they're going to help you with show go through. They're going to help, you know, up through all of that that you didn't, didn't want to deal with or didn't know you needed to deal with, but it was hurting you and you were just hurting on the inside. All that that go through, they're going to help you with that. And the, the life coach, they're going to help you in your go too. They're going to get help you with a, a plan, a path, a vision to where your purpose will end, which is towards that definite place. So that's the work that I try to do when it comes to my work as a life coach. I, I, I want to help them to see the leader that they are, and I want to for sure help them to be able to, to know the purpose that's in them and unpack that. And that's, um, and that's some good stuff. I know um, we had a guest few months back and um she was dealing with the no the paradigm and I know that people you know they desire to do they desire to do things but the limitations I know the way we, we was programmed to think I know as growing up as children we always had a wild imagination and powerful imagination to be Superman and be all these great exports and as we go as we got older through life you know, people dampen that when it comes to you can't do this, you can't do that. And we start downing ourselves. I know how we've been programmed to, to like on the physical surface, only just to see, taste, hear, smell, and that's it. But never being able to 
use our imagination. We all we are spiritual beings, just in this human body. Oh, yeah. But never we and so and yeah, so we're so more focused on the physical aspect, but not tapping into the spiritual um side yeah. of things. So as a life coach, do y'all taper? I know you broke down the difference between the therapist and life coach, but as a life coach, helping people reach their goals and, and the vision and stuff, do y'all tap more into the spiritual mm -hmm. aspect when it comes to being a life coach? Well, yeah, so that's you know why I tell people I, I work with you. And I to do life and leadership unapologetically on purpose because you gotta know how to do life. You know, you can be the best leader and excel in the areas of your own business or in corporate or whatever it is that you do, but your do is not the whole purpose of who you are. Your do is not purpose. Your do is just part of who you are. You have to be able to do it all, you have to be able to flow in purpose in all the areas of your life and so yeah when it comes to the spirit i am a christian based uh, counselor i am uh, my accreditation comes from a christian organization i went to a christian um, university where i got my master's certificate in um as a master life coach so yeah all of it's based in it and, and a lot of times we even may deal with it if you're what when we look at when we're looking at your purpose, we may deal with as it relates to the spirit what your actual um, giftings are. You know, you may uncover that because if you can't know your why and, and and the reason he created you and, and, and left a piece of him in you, then we, we're not gonna be able to go no no farther. So we we gonna have to tackle that in itself so that we can go to the next phase and the next and start to plan and vision it out. Yeah, so definitely. We, we, we hit the spirit well. We, we, we go on and get that oil. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, because I know, we, like I said, we get so caught up in the physical realm, the limitations. We limit ourselves to, yeah. to certain things. You know, people, they have this desire to do great exports, mm -hmm. but don't know where to start. You know, and a lot of times we get so excited about things we want to do. And then we got to the mm -hmm. influence of people, we want people's opinion about, should I do this? What do you think mm -hmm. about this? And then when they come with their opinions, it downs your dream. It downs your desire. It downs your passion for life where you just, just throw it yeah, away. We, like, we got to stop telling, we got to stop telling our business and our purpose and and the dreams and giftings and all of that to everybody because not everybody's in line and everybody's in tune to the frequency that God is downloading in you. And so if they're not in tune and you share something, you don't know where that response is going to go or you don't know what's going to come back. So you, you got to be cognizant of that. You got to be aware of who should be in the inner circle. It should be in the inner circle to not just be there, but cover you in prayer and lift you up for the purpose and the and the gifting that are inside of you and those dreams. Yeah, I know um as of late I've been reading on I mean you no know, dealing with the mindset, dealing with the brain, um the the influences, <laughs> the fears, uh yeah. the people that we associate ourselves around with, you know, the way we've been thinking for so long. Especially when it comes to our, our, our community, the way we mm -hmm. think, the way we grew up, um, yeah. not realizing our full potential. And now that it affects other generations behind us. And mm -hmm. we want to get to that point where we have to want to change our, you hear people say generational curses. Okay, we talk about mm -hmm. that. But are we really, yeah. but what, what steps are we doing to break these generational curses? More and more. Yeah. We have an our youth dying every day. Back, in, I'm from Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, we have at least about 25 homicides within a within a month's time. I Young mean, people losing their lives. How many? How many uh, shootings have we had? Like mass shootings. It's, 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 it's like you said. It's something that we can't just say. There's a problem, or there's this line in our in our family line, and it's a curse. We have to do something about it. We have to pray for one. We have to keep that speaking, declaring, decree over 
our lives and we profess in affirmation what we say and what we see so that it, it can be it can become it. But if we don't and we just keep saying it is that, then that's what it's gonna be. But if we start saying what it, it should be and what it's gonna be, then then we, we we changed our tongue, we changed our language, and that's the major part. We have to change our language so that we can change how we talk about it, how we see it, and how we plan to do it. And I started just putting in the word, putting in action. Shay, you have anything you want to ask? No, not really nothing that I want to ask, but just um, just sitting here thinking, like, it's so true. Like, the mindset, I think that's a big reason why I went into life coaching when I started realizing that people mind, you, you can be a prisoner in your own mind. Like, you can be so trapped in yeah, like you can be so trapped in there. And we, like you said, as a community, we'll run away from all the help. Like we'll run away from the people that really want to help us and the people that we know can help us. We're going to stay clear from them because this requires a responsibility. So a lot of people run from us life coaches because we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to hold you accountable for the goals that yeah. you say that you want to reach and the things that you say that you want to do. We gonna really hold you to that, and I think a lot of it frightens a lot of people when they hear, "Oh wait, you gonna call and check up on me? Wait, you gonna make sure that I did my push-ups and you make sure I did what I said I'm gonna do? Yes, I'm gonna make sure." And and I think that really intimidate a lot of people because I'm a <laughs> yeah, once we start getting older, we yeah, already know this though. Hurt. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it get uncomfortable <laughs> when you gotta answer. Like, Ooh, ass, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, but that accountability is important, and yeah. and you gotta have that. Looking at the phone when Shay call, and they just looking at it like, dang, <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. But, but it causes growth and elevation. Yeah, I mean, but, and that's the and that's the part of the education, like I said, in the language that we have to speak to. And explain it to that, like, this is what you said. And I'm going to be a person that's going to come alongside you, partner with you in this, but know that I can't do it for you. I can want you to see this. I can want success for you. I can want you to get in shape. I can want you to not be on your diabetes medication no more and not have to be on your high blood pressure medicine no more. But I can't do it for you. I can only come alongside you and be a, help you be accountable. But if you don't do the work, then you're not going to get there. And, and, and so, like you said, Shay, part of what you do isn't just about being the cannibal of, of checking up on did you do it, but having the conversations of, well, why? What's, what's going on? And then you start penetrating those barriers in their mind and in their heart, so that, that, those walls, those defenses that they put up. And that's when the real work happens when we're able to get past the mindset when we're able to get past the stigma and the stereotype because that's it. that's the only way that's the only way we succeed and we get past the, the the same cycle is that we break them and we break them by changing things and that's it and you like the old saying you can lead a horse to water can make the horse drink you have to want to do your part you know a lot of times people want everybody to do the work for them, mm -hmm. but they're not willing to put the work in themselves. They're not willing to put in a long hour. They're not willing to sacrifice some things. They want everything to be so easy that mm -hmm. they just want everything handed to them. And like I said, being in that position of being a life coach, how is it just dealing with people as a whole? You know, that takes a special person to deal with people mm -hmm. on them different levels because you got some people hard-headed, knuckleheads, and I know patients come in, um, mercy got to come in, because the Bible do say be merciful as well. Mm -hmm. So how do y'all implement in that field of being a life coach with the, having the patient and having the mercy? Because some people, you got to be patient and have mercy on them. You know, it is a level of grace that you have to have for whatever your purpose is. But 
it's kind of like when you get in line and you get in tune with what your purpose is and what you're called to do in this earth, the grace is multiplied. And so, yeah, you may have hard days, but the grace that's upon you, it's that thing that you can do that nobody else could do as easy as you, without stress, without pain. And that's how I even describe purpose to people because they think it's a big thing. They, have, they think it's, it has to be all this and that and the glamour. But it's like, it's that, that grace that's on you. It's that thing that, that you do effortlessly, but people cannot. Other people lose, they, they go crazy trying to do it. Or they, go, they can't figure it out. But you, it's something in you that it just clicks. And so for me, yeah, I have times where I'm like, okay, I write this, but what are we going to do? And so one thing I do, and, I, and you said something that I was earlier when you were talking in the beginning, I always ask permission. And I do that if I'm giving a prophetic word at, at church, on the phone, with my friend, whoever, I ask permission and they know because I don't want nobody to say that she trying to be crazy. I, I ask permission. And in my um, life coaching uh, clients as well, I have a contract. And it's in there that it says, you, I, this is my, my time and my place of asking permission to be in, be a part of your life. And as being a part of your life for the time that we're going to be doing these sessions, I have access. And because I have access, I have, free, I have not exuberant freedom, but I have freedom to be able to come directly to you and say whatever you, you said. And so we build that in the beginning of the relationship so that it's just, it's a known factor. Because if not, then yeah, I'm going to be trying to do what I need to do and I'm going to be frustrated. I'm going to be upset because I'm getting all this resistance and I'm getting all of whatever. But it's like, we got to, we, we have to establish that from the beginning. So that a lot of times takes away from that extra. I'm not saying I don't get it, but a lot of times I get it because I know it's taking you to a place that you haven't been. That's why I said the key thing of life coach is getting you to your goal too. I'm getting you to somewhere you've never been. You don't, you, you, you didn't see yourself there. You don't know how to handle it. You're unsure of yourself. And so we walking through it, you know? And so that's why I may get it, but I get happy sometimes when I get it because I'm like, oh, you there? This you there? You there, bro? And they be like, this, this girl crazy. She, 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 she happy that I'm mad right now. But it's a good man. And so you kind of just have to see and ask a thing what's happening and see even the other's way is good because we are making progress so that goes to you the purpose to get you there. Man, and um just the, like I said, just walking them through it, just helping them get there to it. And having that willingness, mm -hmm. having that willing mind, yeah. you know, just like you have to have that willing mind to be safe. And anything yeah. you like, you have to be willing yeah. to and what, what your is goal. to be saved, you gotta come for faith. You got to say it out loud. I confess my mouth. You know, believe in my heart. And Jesus, God, right? Jesus, right Jesus, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. All of that. You, you got to say all of that and believe all that. For, yeah, that was, for you to be saved. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you got to kind of do the same thing when it comes to your purpose. You got to say it all and believe it for yourself. Because if you're not, and you're not going to be willing, then you're wasting your time and mine. And I don't want to waste my time. And right. I'm pretty sure Shay don't want to raise sons either. You know, don't kind of be if you're playing. <laughs> you think you're going to have an overnight success. No, 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 no. Yeah, I think it's the work. I think people. Just give, and then she no, tell you, but get back into the work. Like Shay was saying, mm -hmm. but she get back on, get into the work. And then a lot of time it comes with the fear. Fear, fear, fear okay. creeps in. You know, things you know come I mean? up. All types of things come to the head, come to the mind. 
why I can't do this, why I can't do that, because of the fear factor. But how, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the fear, what is your method on helping your clientele overcome fear? Because we know fear plays a huge role yeah, in things I mean, that we know, come up against. Especially if it's like a goal, I, I tell them, let's break it up. You know, you see the thing that's way over there on the other side of the moon. Okay, but before we get to the moon, we can we can go we can go at least to the to the to the uh to the corner of the earth, you know, then to the other side, then start get you know getting the top, getting the uh what is the spaceship, you know. I'm joking, but I'm saying like there's other things that can be done before we get to the thing that you're afraid of, and maybe if we get to those little things that we broke it up in, you can begin to get courage you can get, begin to be encouraged and then you can begin to have faith that you can make it and so a lot of times you got to see it you know you got to see evidence that you can do it and that you can get there and you can make it and so I, I always say break it up and, and that's a, a, a tool and it's a method that works over and over again because they once they see that first milestone they realize I'm on my way, you know, I'm on my way. And, and then they get, to the, they get to the next one and the next one, and they realize that it was just fear trying to stifle them and keep them from their purpose or their promise or their dream or their goal. And we can't let fear, fear run nothing up in here. Fear don't have no place up in here, you know, fear, fear not a ghost. And, and, and that's what that's what we do. That's what we preach. And that's what we deal with a lot. We deal with a lot of fear. We deal with fear, and we deal with other people's opinions. I guess you want to tie that into the fear factor. Um, just mm -hmm. uh, uh, just you. We want these things to happen a lot. We want the goals to come to pass. We want all this stuff to come to fruition. But once again, mm -hmm. we got to how to get out of that. Fear factor. So we have to replace those fears and we have to replace those, break those strongholds, if that makes sense. Because, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. desire a lot of things in life, but they that fear comes in. We so mm -hmm. into like, okay, I want this, but I see what I got right now in the natural. And that stopped us from pursuing what we want to pursue in life. You know, they say see, you do anything. You Sounded like complacency right there. That sounded like, well, I got this. I, I, I should be grateful for this. I shouldn't want war. This, this ought to be enough. No, that's a little bit of, uh, you know, not wanting to, to, to really step and stretch yourself because if you get stretched, how much more will you have to do? How much more would you be able to hold? Can I even handle it? And the fact of the matter is you can't, you know, a lot of it is self-talk. You have to train yourself to talk well of yourself. You have to begin to, you know, say, I can, I am, I will, I do. And instead of I can't, I ain't, I won't, now, you know, we have to change our language. That is a major thing for us as a culture. As a people. daily practice. Yeah, this is. <laughs> That's a daily practice. That ain't even yes. nothing that we happens quit. overnight, literally, y'all. Yes, That's so a we, we, we quit to say, uh-uh, no, nah, no, nah, that, that ain't me. That ain't me. No. Why not? Why is it not you? You know, why can't you do that? What, what, what's wrong with you being that person that is the one that's supposed to go get the engineering degree? Why not you? You know, and, and, and sometimes you got to ask a person that. Like, why not you? What is it? Why not? You know, because depending upon where they were and what they came from and what they grew up in, these conversations may be the first they've ever had in their life. And so because of that, that's when we know we have to be that person. We have to be that one that is going to, 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 like I said, 
come alongside them where the others didn't and show them the capabilities of who they are and show them the essence of what God put in them and call it out and, and, and speak to that, you know? And that's why, like you said, do we talk to the spirit? Do we talk to the soul? Do we get up in that? Yeah, that's why I decided to that inner man, that inner self, and say, look, you got all of this anointing, all of this power, all of this grace that's upon you and that's in you, but you yet afraid. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of what he put in you? If he put it in you, he knew what he was doing. If he put it in you, then that means there was something in you that could use it and could, and could hold it and handle it. He don't make mistakes. And so that, that, that's, that's, you know, we, we got to kind of sometimes get, get real and gutter like that because they this is the first time they found it. And yeah. I don't I don't want you to not know who you are. I, I want I want you to know everything he said about you and not what they said. I want you to know what he said. And that's what we want to, and that's the point we want to get to. That's the root of what we want to get to. Breaking the stronghold, being real, being out there being open, you know, can't put old wine into new wine skin. Um, yeah. if you think about what Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve was born, the Bible said they was naked and they were not ashamed. You know, mm -hmm. naked is being open, not being ashamed at all. I know a lot mm -hmm. of times we have insecurities, we have uh flaws, we have all this stuff that we deal with, and I know mm -hmm. with being a life coach, do, do people talk to you about these things like? Yes, definitely. You know, um, I, I hear it a lot. Often I even hear it, you know, when I do my consultation and I, somebody will, uh, make a comment or they'll um, inbox me and say something. Yeah, people, ha they, they, they have to talk through the insecurities. They have to talk to the self-confidence issues. They have to talk through it because everybody else sometimes around them are the ones that created it. They created the insecurities. They created the self-doubt and self, you know the unawareness and awkwardness that they feel and you know uncomfortableness in their own skin. Like unfortunately, the people that should have been affirming them weren't doing it. They didn't do it. And so now they need somebody to 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 come alongside them and to say, to speak well of them and, and to say, the, the God gave you beautiful ashes. God said you, you, you are his beloved. God says that you are, are his chosen, peculiar, you know? God says that, you know, you are the head and not the tail, you know? And, and, and you have to begin to say and speak the word over them and proclaim the word over them so that they can begin to it can begin to resonate and to get deep in their soul because for you know when they start it 20, 30, 40, 50 years, they've been heard, they've been heard and been told anything else. And so you gotta sometimes get to that. But if this is where it comes in the difference in the, the, the life coach and the therapist. But sometimes if it's too deep. And, and there's some some deep work that needs to be done that, that needs to be healed with healed in. You might have, I might have to refer you back to therapy because that root gotta get it has to get it has to get the attention that it needs. It has to get healed. And so if there's areas that are deeply not healed, then I, I, I yeah, as a life coach, it will be unethical for me to keep working with you when I am not credentialed in those areas. I'm not a licensed professional counselor. I'm a licensed and credentialed life coach, but I'm not a licensed and professional counselor. So I would refer you back to work through those things because those things may need the most attention. Sometimes you gotta, you know, when you go to the ER, they, they they work on the area that ha that needs the most attention. You have a whole five things going on, but the number one thing that needs the most attention is what they have to do, and that's where they call the specialist in from that. And so the specialist may need to come back in and, and work on those healed those hurts that aren't healed yet. 
because they need to take top priority. Right. And I know it's now we see seeing more of that now with the therapy, the healing, the process, the uh, rebirth, you want to say, to be able to advance and move forward. Because a lot of stuff we dealt with in our childhood come from our childhood, like the trauma in our childhood mm -hmm. that we know it didn't probably didn't affect us then. But as we go through life, it starts playing its toll on us. And we never really yeah. got the professional help because in our community, we don't hear the word therapist a lot. We never heard that a lot. You know, that's why a lot of times people turn to different things to block out that trauma, especially with men. Men, we don't really yeah. communicate a lot. We deal a lot of trauma in our own personal lives that we deal with in our childhood. And we never really got the proper tools you want to say to get the help mm -hmm. that we need because we'll because yeah. you know we were told you a man you shouldn't cry you shouldn't do this but all that stuff built on the inside what happens that man he takes all that frustration he takes all that anger out on his wife and that's not good yeah man you got yeah me y'all gotta cry drop your ass to you stop holding them to and, 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 and trying to hold it in so hard and, and then you become hard no no, crying does not make you soft. Crying does not make you less of a man. If anything, it makes you more of a real man because it lets the people in your life know that you that that, that you you hurt too. You know, you feel too. So that's so that's what's up. That's why I'm kind of picking up now is the openness, the rebirth, the restart, the reset in life. No, having yeah. our lives reset. You know, maybe like the strip says, in Christ you're a new creature. Old thing has passed away, for all things become new. So we want that newness to come into our life. We know it has starts on the ends and now on the outside. You get brand new clothes, you get your brand new car, you get your house, you get all this out of appearance stuff. But if you still got that old person in you. All that out of stuff, out of mm -hmm. appearance stuff don't matter until we change steers. You know, that's why the Bible mm -hmm. tells us to meditate day and night. Meditate on the word day and night, which means this is an ongoing process. This is not no one-time thing. It takes nine months for a baby to get here. It takes time for a plant to grow. It takes time for things to grow. And we become so impatient that we just get so frustrated, so angry, we want this instant gratification and it don't work. We think, okay, I did this one time. I put it down. I'm good. And then for you know it, that root that we prop back up, and you right back, and you took two, three, four, five, six steps back instead of mm -hmm. that taking that step forward. So you hear people say the process. Process is fun. So those that's listening on Facebook Live, we love to hear from you. That's on Facebook Live. Put your comments in the comment section. If you got any questions you want to ask. Feel free to ask questions. It's all about being free. We want to be free. We don't want to just talk about freedom. We actually want freedom. The Bible to whom the sun set free is free indeed. So everybody should want to be free. So we want those results of being free. Uh, Shay, you have anything you want to um, add to it? Anything you want to come into? I want to make a comment about the fear, about the fear for it, the fear, the fear factors. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love that's really one of my favorite things is like exploring limiting beliefs and like breaking those barriers, you know, really chunking all the stuff that we believe about ourselves out, really throwing away the old narrative or the things that we believe. And for me, I know for me, when I first got into the coaching space, my fear was of being the person to go first. Like it is scary. It could be scary being the person to go first. Like you're doing something new. Like she's like uh team was saying, you ain't never done it before. You ain't never been exposed to this. It's something you're stepping out on your faith and you stepping out in your purpose. So it don't feel, it didn't never feel bad for me, but I still was afraid to go first. It's like, dang, I gotta go first and I gotta be the one to break all these generational yeah. curses. And I gotta be the yeah. one like. It's, it's, it's a lot of responsibility it was, it with was going first. In you. Right. It was something in you that what you were able to do it when others couldn't. That was supposed to go, but they couldn't. But it was something in you that you, even though you were 
afraid, you still knew that you had to do it. It was like, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm still something mm-hmm. beyond the use now, but you got to. You have to do this. And that's why I said it's a grace on you. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a love. It's a fear. It's like, I'm scared. I'm nervous, but I, I know I'm supposed to do this. And I, and, it's, and I feel that way. Every book I publish, every book, I literally be like, oh my God, Lord, oh God. I, my friends, I tell them, I be like, oh, I be so nervous. Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> and she never understood. And now they have a children's book coming out. And she said, girl, I know what you were talking about now. I said, see? But it's a good kind of nervous. You know, that's it's nervous. a good kind. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, that nervous, that worry, that doubt, it still can happen. But it's a good way. It's a good way that it happens, you know. And, and that's good. And so you the first. But let me tell you, I can tell you, I, folk, the family members that might not even be saying nothing about it, shout out watching you. Because they watching to see what all God do through you and you. And, 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 and then still you're able and capable to do after that. And so they look at, they, they got their eyes on you. They may not ever say nothing to you, Shay, but they watch it, what you do to see if God can do it in their lives as well. And so you keep doing it and doing it well because he's graced you for it and he has a fullness of an assignment on your life that you're going to be one that can teach others to do just what you did, how you did it. This is just the beginning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I believe that because I keep like people like like hurt people gravitate to me, which it, it's it's so crazy. I like I had these experiences where people just feel so relaxed to me. They'll tell me their whole life story, and I'll just be sitting there and I'll just be listening. And they'll be like, I'm sorry. And I'll be like, no, 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 no. That's literally what I'm here for. I'll be like, no, no, no. That's like okay, because that's literally what I'm here for. These people literally gravitate to me. And I'll just be like, God. Like this, this past weekend, I actually was grateful. I was more grateful for it. And it was my first time really stopping and being like, God, thank you for sending me those people so I can tell them what I need to tell them. And a lot of the time we don't be thinking about where we be at in our life and where we be don't be for us. Like it really be so we can encourage somebody else so we can really prophesize to somebody else and really let them know that God is real and he do real things to people that we that we feel like it's not nothing. Like we normal people, but then we look up and then we six figure earners and we millionaires, you know, and we just be grateful. Like we have to be grateful that our, that we got stretched and that our minds went that far because we supposed to be abundant, y'all. And deal with the healing part of the situation too, just dealing with the hurt. Um, mm-hmm. Dealing with the emotional scars that we deal with. The thing about it, in this world right now, we got some real issues going on right now. You got people dealing with addiction, all types of di- addiction. You got people dealing with uh, mental health. You got people dealing with anger. You got people dealing with all kind of stuff that's going on in this world. And we keep putting a Band-Aid on it, and it's not going to get no better until we actually confront these things that we're dealing with on a regular basis and really coming together, letting a person know, come alongside a person, let them know, hey, you're not by yourself. You're not in this thing alone, but we're in this thing together. I love the scripture when the scripture says, confess your faults one to another, then pray that you may be healed. We have to get to that point where we confess our faults one to another. Everybody got faults. We confess these faults one to another and we pray. God like would do the healing. And God would do the healing. Cause we all got healing. We got we got we need in our lives. And we're not, I'm not I can tell you, I'm not there at that point yet. Cause we still a work in progress. When you join that process process because we are growing every day. What you did yesterday, you may do something different today. And then what you may do tomorrow, you may not even do this today. You know, so we constantly evolving, but we are dealing with some real life issues. You never know the person's going through. The worst thing a person can go through is that mental imprisonment. 
And people walk around right now in that mental imprisonment. Who can I talk to? Who can I trust? If I talk to this person, they're going to tell this person. And that comes into a person's mind. How in your in their life feel? How can you help cope with that when it comes to just allowing a person to be comfortable with you? Say, hey, you know what? I need some help. That realness, being real with ourselves. You know, if you go to what they said, the AA meeting, first day to admit you have a problem. And we never admit that we had a problem. We never admit that. We never admit that we had a problem. We say, oh, it's all good. And it's not good. Nah, I and think we, it usually come like, I think it usually come by, I want to really say kind of by accident. Like for me, it's usually something that I say that really hit that person like, oh, she talking to me. And it's that conviction. Like, if you don't feel a little convicted about what you're doing, you really won't change it. So it is really that conviction. Like, when you know you ain't you doing something you ain't supposed to be doing, even if it's the smallest realm of that. So for me, it's like I always hit hit that little spot of uh, conviction. Like, have you really done everything? If you say you tried everything, what's your definition of everything? You know, it just—it's <laughs> that, yeah, it's that. You know, find that. What's your line. definition? Because your definition probably not my definition. So tell me again. <laughs> is put it, is that put in that word? Put in that word. Okay, I'm gonna ask this one too. Like rain down thing. Um, Paul said that we should always examine ourselves. So part of this rebirth part of this healing is examining ourselves write down the things mm -hmm. that we that that we dealt with write down the things that hurt us write down the people we sold ourselves ourselves we we'll put ourselves around with writing all those things out so we know where we at and what we know we need to get there because a lot of times we don't want, we're not confronting what we're dealing with we just putting a blind eye over to it and because we don't want to see our real self and when somebody exposed you to your to who you really are we don't like it. It's a it's a painful thing. Yes, I literally just created a, a new worksheet that I'm actually gonna be sending to my clients soon. <laughs> and it it's it's gonna be hard because it was even hard for me. And it's asking you what you have in your life right now that you want and what you have that you don't want. And what you really want to have in your life that you don't have yet. So it was really um, challenging to really decipher like, dang, what do I have in my life now that I don't want? What do I have now that I'm already satisfied with? But what am I really trying to acquire? So it's really breaking it down into those realms and being like, okay, what I got that I really don't want? Let me push this out. So yeah. just really approaching it from a different level because everybody don't think the same way. Yeah, and it's a process. Yeah. You know, it's not an overnight thing. This whole thing is a process because we are redoing our lives all over again. We were just, I won't say that tonight. We are redoing our whole lives over again. We got six months left in 2022. Um, finishes y'all strong. Those that's listening tonight. Learn to be real with yourself. That's not focus on the neighbor. That's focus more on self in this season right now. Um, really being healed, um, getting refocused, getting rejuvenated, um, get get more close to the most high. That's the most important thing. That very first foundation. Because God is getting our attention. He is still speaking to us in his time right now. So we need to get back in tune with God. We need to get right back into his word. That's the foundation that we need first and foremost. And everything else will take its toll. Yeah. So, so that that really takes its toll first and foremost, having that foundation. Um, another thing, as you restart your life over again, insights, I tell anybody, if it's in your personal trainer, I have a personal trainer. And my trainer with me on the app right now with me. She's my co-host. So invest in your personal <laughs> trainer. And um, cause that's a good thing because we have a personal trainer that helps out a lot because that personal trainer will keep you 
accountable, will work with you, work alongside you mm -hmm. to take it to the next level. So I tell guys, start getting in shape. Start feeling good about yourself. Let's take control of our life. Let's not allow other things and other people to control our life. Because we've been through that. We did that for so long in our lives. A lot of people took our controllers in our 20s, in our 30s. It got to be that breaking point where you know what? Enough is enough. Because ain't nobody going to come in here knocking your front door and tell you to get your life together. So, no. Unfortunately, it's telling them tonight, though. Get your mind right, get out of your head, and jump back into life. Because this time, y'all, we're telling them tonight, Herman. And you're right. And you're <laughs> right. And say, and you're right because I don't know we find this our own lives too as well. Because I'm gonna tell you, the test is gonna come after we get off the air tonight. The test is gonna come. Them doubts gonna mm -hmm. come. Them fears gonna creep in. I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. But when them tests come, it's to see if you truly real about getting the results that you really want. If that makes sense. So that is so okay. true. Them tests come. Don't let the seeds fester. Don't even let them take root and plant themselves. Don't and don't and knock them away. Don't and, and let what's supposed to get in get in. But that stuff that's just trying to creep in, it, it, they creep it for a reason. Right, and <laughs> they gonna come up. Don't let it take root. Don't let it take root. <laughs> and you're right, cause they gonna come up. Just like if you working on eating healthy, you know what's gonna try to come up. The fast food will try to come up. Everybody's yeah. going to start inviting you to the restaurants, everything. All the parties and the barbecues. <laughs> and go have all donuts at work. Every, donuts every, at work. Every, every day. <laughs> every day. So all, it, the, all of it. All, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you, where can, we, um, where can we find you? Where can we find your books? Tell the people where we can find you and your books. And what's per next projects coming up next? Well, naturally, with what we've been talking about tonight, I want to encourage you guys to go check out my Mind Matters Project. It literally is talking to you about getting out of your head and jumping back into life because we all get stuck sometimes. Like, we get stuck because of life, health, we get stuck because of family, we, get just, we just get stuck. And I want to help you get unstuck and back on purpose. So, check out the Mind Matters Project, it's a book and a journal. You can get it on Amazon and print, digital, and audio. And I also have two more projects, the Pro Series, that's a mini book and mini journal. And then I have a third project, Things My Mama Said. And it literally is 20 things that my mama said. We from East Texas, so that means they country sayings, but they real and they raw. We give you some stories behind it and the life lessons we learned them all the way. And then also, if you connect with me at bit.ly, all caps, join fam, you get 20% off at my store, shop.tjmiller.com, where you will see all of the books. You'll see all of the message merch. I have, have on a no line message merch um, supporting my fight for Lyme disease. Um, but all the message merch is out there on the store. We have buttons, pins, apparel, just novelty items. So go check it out. Um, we also have a school. It's called Life and Leadership League by TJM. And on there, you will have courses that you can take self paced And some literally are starting out at zero dollars. There's actually two that are on there for zero dollars. It's a tool. Um, if you're trying to save money, you know, if you need some, some help with saving, you got to go. It's a tool for that. And then there's a free class of course out there as well. So go check out the leadership and then um, if you're looking for any coaching, you want to um, have me as your life coach, have me come speak, or any organizational leadership strategy, you can check out all those things at tanyajmiller.com and on our social media, on these social media streets, you will find me under Talking with Tanya. What is coming up next? My fourth project. The uh, Motivated Effort Project is coming out very, very soon, like before the end of the month. And then we will also have our mastermind, the Mind Matters Mastermind. It's coming out real, real soon, too, this summer. 
So be on the lookout for that. You can talk more about what we talked about tonight in the Mind Mastermind, or you can check and look out for the Motivated Effort book to get you motivated, keep you motivated, and remember that it all starts with you. Thank y'all, Shay. Thank you, Fernan. I have definitely had a great time tonight. I've enjoyed it. So um, I feel like I'm part of the family. So thank you for letting me walk, 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 walk in his, walk in his hand, walk his way. And my game is <laughs> Oh, we thank you as well. Thank you for taking time of your business to hang out with me and Shay tonight here on, on the podcast, of course. And you're welcome anytime. We love hearing extraordinary men and women who are doing extraordinary things to impact a generation, to shape our culture, impact our generation. That's what it's all about. You know, we have problems, but then we want to come with answers to the problem. So tonight was very powerful tonight, just knowing that we are working and making we are restarting our lives all over again. I'm understanding now when it's when Christ said we must be born again. Mm-hmm. So I'm understanding now. So we must be born again. Not talking about being born physically, but being reborn spiritually. Embracing yeah. that new life, embracing that new culture, embracing embracing it meant exact. So that's what we know. We're being reborn again tonight, having that born again experience. On the inside starts here, and then watch how the world now around is going to take control, and it's going to it's going to be brand new. So, I'm very excited. Get some life coaching. Get you some therapy. Get you some allies. Allies keep you accountable. So get you some allies. Get away from people who are going to tell you what you want to hear. Get with people that's going to tell you what you need to hear. And you're going to be okay. Have fun. Just enjoy the process, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the process of becoming the great you. You are beautiful. You are unique. You are a star in the making. I'm going to say you're a star in the making. You are a star. I'm going to say that. You are a star. You are iconic. You are great. Tell yourself that. Say, I am great. I am wise. I am smart. I am beautiful. I am intelligent. Like you mentioned earlier, Tanya, speak those things. Be those that word. Speak those things of your life. Don't have to wait till the next person tell you, you this, you that. Tell yourself that even David had to encourage himself. We don't encourage ourselves enough. We so wait till somebody encourage us. Encourage yourself. Yeah, encourage yourself. Break those barriers. Tell you say, okay, I did this wrong. Okay, I'm gonna go back and refix this. I'm gonna go back and redo this. Take accountability. Take control of our lives. And that's what we want to do. We want to take control of our lives and not be controlled because we've been controlled too long. Now let's take control of our, our destiny, take control of our family tree. Um, because those who have children, I know you want to raise your children to be great. So let's take control of our family. It starts within the family, it starts with us first, and then it's going to say charity starts at home and then spread abroad. Let's take care of home first, then all that stuff's gonna spread. So and we have so any final remarks from my special guest tonight before we get off the air tonight. Um, you know, you, you said it great when you said um, be renewed in your mind and in your spirit. You know, I, I always say to the, um, anybody, whether it's or if I'm speaking, I tell them, you know, be sober. You know, and they're like, hey, what you mean be sober? Be sober in your mind and your spirit. You know, the scripture goes on to say be washed from the village, you know, because the devil will come in any kind of way to come and wreak happen and do this thing. Um, but if we're sober in our minds and our hearts and our spirits, we also give ourselves break to not just go for it, but to go for it on purpose. And so I just, I just, I just, just want to say to be sober, God, be sober about your life as you renew it, as you go forth, as you reorganize it, be sober and nothing is too hard. I, I, I don't know why, but I feel like I want to say that too. Nothing is too hard for God to come in and do his thing in your life, in your in your path, in your plan, in your, in your, in your vision and the purpose. Because the purpose has always been there. You just had other stuff that happened. So it's not too hard for him to come in 
and, and, and make this mess a message. You know what I mean? And so give him that grace and be sober when he does this so that you 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 know that you won't stay the mess, that you won't stay what happened. And you won't stay in what was, but you allow God to show you what is because he knew what it was and what it should be the whole time. I just want to just say that as a final word and just thank you, Farmer, for having me on. You know, allow and just want to continue to allow God to grace you to be able to speak to the, especially the men that are not as open with what. God is saying it and they don't know how to speak it, what he's saying or you're giving them an answer, even if they don't they don't comment, you're giving them an answer and an outlook by speaking, speaking what you know to be and what you're learning and what you're what you're sharing on your journey. So don't be ashamed, don't worry, don't doubt in what you share or how much you bring yourself to the storyline. Because men are watching you, and you are an example to men that are often and commonly afraid to either speak from the emotional side, You're, but they're listening to you, and they're watching you, and they're learning to learning how to 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 speak it, even if it's just to the person that they're watching you. They're learning themselves, and you are teaching them how to do it. And you're teaching them with language, with scripture, with prayer, and with thought. And they're watching. They're watching. They may not say nothing, but they're watching. So keep being the voice. Keep showing the way. Keep impacting. And keep being vulnerable in his, in his hands. Because he got the whole world in his hands. But I mean, he got you. He is vulnerable and you need to be. Because men don't see it, but if they see it, they'll see you, and then they'll see them, and it starts happening over and over again. So thank you. I did it. I don't know. I apologize. I'm throwing the mic back. I'm sorry. I went over the time. <laughs> well, it's fine. We thank you so much for having a having a, having um time here with us and spending time here with us. We are. So grateful. We appreciate you for taking the time out to hang with us today. And um, you always welcome here on Walking His Ways. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. And thank you once again. I had to tell the difficult I am, but we appreciate you once again. Um, tonight was very on timing, of course. I know we pressed for time. We're going to be back here next week here on Impact Voice. We're actually going to be doing two shows. We're doing a Tuesday show and we're doing a Wednesday show. The Wednesday show is going to be very, very special. We're doing a show on manhood. We are at war. I got two guests that's going to be with us next Wednesday. We're going to be dealing with the masculinity of manhood. We're not talking about the image. We're talking about the character. We're talking about breaking away from being a boy to a man. Paul said this, when I was a child, I thought I was a child, the reason I was a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And we, as men, talk to the fellas, as men, it's time for us to put away those childish things. It's come who God made you to be, come into our den and says, you hear people say, I'm a king and I'm this and that. Now it's time to actually walk into that that role of being a king. And then if you're a husband, you want to be the best husband you could be. You want to be the best father you could be. So we have to embrace our true man. And man, we are at war right now, man. It's more with being incarcerated. We are out of the homes. The divorce rates are sky high. God never tended to be that way. We have to take control of this. So we're going to be doing that next Wednesday night as we talk about men who we are at war. I'm very excited about that and how God really going to put that together. And we love for the ladies to be on this well. We want to hear from y'all ladies how to bridge this gap of war right now because the war going on right now. The house is divided right now. Women going one way, the men going one way, at least cheering by themselves. So we want to hear from the ladies on this as well as we talk about um, then with manhood, we are at war next Wednesday. So we'll be doing two shows. Tuesday, our regular show Tuesday. And we'll do a special edition, like I said, Wednesday. 
called manhood. We know Father's Day is coming up, of course, just the month of June. We know that the fathers don't really get the recognition they deserve. And I know through the years, you know, ladies have been holding it down. Of course, we know that. Ladies have been playing both roles of father and mother because the man has not been present. But it's time for men to step up to the plate. It's time for us to get back to our rightful place. But God is dealing with us first. And um, that's what we have to do. So men, that's going to not, not purpose, you know, our destiny. Love our, if you marry, love your wife. Love your children. Be there. Be that leader that God wants you to be. Be the head. Everybody want to shout out. Men want to shout out. I'm the head. I'm, you submit to me. Now, that woman's not going to submit to you if you're not doing your part. If you're doing your part as a man, she will willfully submit unto you. She will willfully walk beside you. She will be there with you. But if you're not doing your part as a man, she's not going to do her part as the wife. So, fellas, be about your business. Be real with yourself. And I'm looking forward to tonight on next Wednesday night. Of course, it's going to be some very powerful stuff. So we're about to be ready to get off the air. Um, so we want everybody to have a great night. Be blessed. Remember, this is some healing that's going on. So we want y'all to be very encouraged. We'll see y'all next week here on Walking This Way Impact Wars Podcast. Good night. Bye.